Hi, my name is Chen Ho Kang, and I'm a Senior Solutions Engineer for ArcGIS Indoors at Esri. In this ArcGIS Indoors demonstration, we'll be looking at publishing Space Planner oriented web map and configuring Indoor Space Planner app in ArcGIS Online Cloud. Space Planner allows you to plan occupant activity in indoor spaces, including assigning occupants to individual spaces or activity-based work areas called hotels or hot desks. You can create a plan in Space Planner to visualize where and how occupants are assigned to spaces. Using visualizations tool and key data points, each plan provides a way to evaluate several scenarios before deciding on the plan that best fits your organizational needs. The Indoor Space Planner works best with the Indoor Database model. The Indoor Database provides essential attribute schemas to use hotel and hot desk capabilities and use the entire project in a floor over map. To prepare a space planner, occupants, units, levels, facilities feature layers, and area tables are required. Units, labels, facilities feature layers should have been created when importing BIM or CAD to indoor geodatabase. The occupancy point feature requires the staff contact information in a specific table format, which gets loaded with the generate occupant features geoprocessing tool. The areas table is a standalone table that comes with the indoor database. You can create areas table separately. First, verify that the unit's feature layer has the assignment underscore type coded domain value. Right-click the unit's layer, go to design, and select domains, and look for dom underscore assignment underscore type. It should have a hot desk, hotel, none, not assignable, and office for domain values. Second, Verify that the unit's feature layer has the area ID and assignment type attribute fields. Also, right-click the assignment type attribute field's name and click fields and confirm that the assignment type is using the assignment type coded domain. Again, this is all default schema if you're using the indoor database model. If your data was created with Indoor Dataset Geoprocessing Tool instead of Indoor Database Geoprocessing Tool, verify that the data has a correct domain value and those two attribute fields. Next, a list of staff contact information and the office location data needs to be loaded and converted to occupant's feature layer inside the Indoor Database. The staff contact information table must have the unit ID field that matches with the unit layer's unit ID field. The unit ID in the occupants table joins with the unit layer's unit ID and creates occupant central point features at the corresponding unit polygon features. Along with the unit ID, the occupant table must include known as email, contact underscore phone, and contact underscore extension fields. Known as column should have a full name of the staff. Email column is an email address. Contact underscore phone is the occupant's phone number. And contact underscore extension is the occupant's associated extension code if applicable. In addition, it's recommended to have organization underscore level one, organization underscore level underscore two, job underscore title, start underscore date, and site underscore name fields, which can enhance the space planner experience. Org underscore level underscore one column is the occupant's department name, and org underscore level underscore two column is the occupant's team name. Job underscore title column is the occupant's job title. Start underscore date is the occupant's starting date. And the site underscore name column is the occupant's associate site. The values under the site underscore name field should match the name field in the site feature class. 
Feel free to have an additional data column if the organization feels it would enhance the occupant's data layer. Once the occupant table is ready, run the Generate Occupant Feature Geo Processing tool. The Input Unit Features is the unit's feature layer, and the Unit ID field is the unit ID. The Input Occupant table is the Contact List table, and the Occupant ID field is the unit ID. The Output Occupant Feature class can be named as People or Occupants inside the Indoor Feature Dataset inside the database. Once the occupants layer loads into the map, remove the symbology and set the layer as a floor aware layer. Now we have to go back to the units layer and update the office space status based on the assignment type. I already have joined the units layer with the occupants layer based on unit ID. And based on known as field, I have populated the feature with occupied space with the office domain value. Additionally, I have selected empty spaces and assigned them with non-domain values. The office locations that should not be used have been assigned as not assignable domain values. With populated values and assignment type field, the unit layer symbology is updated and color-coded. Spend some time with colors as this color symbology will be displayed in the space planner. For an enhanced experience, configure the label to display the office occupant's name with their scale range. Here, I have configured the name label to appear when the map scale goes in beyond 1 to 180. I also labeled the units layer, set its visibility scale, and configure the SQL query to only label locations that are not office. Make sure to turn off the floor aware setting and have the areas standalone table inside the map content. If you're not using the indoor database model and need to create the areas table, add area underscore ID, area underscore name, area underscore type, schedule underscore email, and capacity fields inside the areas table, and set area underscore type domain for the area underscore type. More information can be found about the indoor database schemas in ArcGIS Pro's Indoors Information Model documentation site. The final task is to create global IDs for the areas table, units, and occupants feature layers. You can easily create and assign the global ID by right-clicking the feature layer in the catalog pane, selecting Manage, and clicking the Add Global IDs. The preparation to use the Space Planner app is complete, and let's publish these layers as a web map. When publishing the web map, make sure to set the configuration to editable. Once the web map publishing is complete, go to the ArcGIS online site and the overview page of the published layer. From the setting menu, scroll down to host the feature layer tab and verify that all the editing boxes are checked. Also, add a check inside the export data option and save. Once it's complete, go to the web map overview page, select create web app menu and select configurable apps. To find the Space Planner app, move to Show All tab and type Indoor inside the search box, which will filter out the rest of the apps and display Indoor Space Planner and Indoor Viewer. Select Indoor Space Planner and click Create Web App. Provide an appropriate title, tag, and summary and click Done. This opens the Space Planner configuration app. Within the first configuration tab, if you want to only certain group members to change the office space plans, enable the space planner merge option and assign the authorized group. The second configuration tab allows selecting additional filtering search capabilities. Click Save when the configuration is complete. 
which takes to a new plan template page. Give a proper title, text, and summary for this space planner and create plan. It opens the space planner with a floor aware map. This concludes the publishing space planning oriented web map and configuring indoor space planner app demonstrations. Please look for other YouTube videos on assigning, removing, and relocating office spaces and setting hot desks and hotels for others to view in indoors viewer and mobile apps. Thank you for watching.